Okay, okay. Let's uh, look at uh, chapter six now. Uh, this is on social transformation. So we looked at the uh, previous chapter about uh, leadership, agency, and uh, living labs, cities, and so on. So here we'll look, uh, get back to living labs as well, but focus more on what an individual can do as well as groups of people and how a individual's uh, choices, behavior, opinions, uh, etc. depend on the group in which they belong, like a reference group, family, society, and so on. Okay. And what is the social transformation typology of changing attitudes, norms, and behavior? This is from Fauna Foreman. So the Jap chapter has four goals. First, it will show why integral solutions, including changing social attitudes, norms, and behaviors are essential for tackling climate change. So we talked about climate change as uh, a problem of power, and here we'll talk about climate change as uh, a problem that requires integral solutions. Secondly, we will learn why localizing and personalizing the impacts of climate change are the most effective strategies in changing these social attitudes, norms, and behaviors. Okay, uh, Global warming, global sea level rise, uh, global crop yields, global disease outcomes, and global numbers uh, can be uh, good for awareness raising, but if you want actual change in social attitudes, norms, and behaviors, then making it as personal as possible uh, uh, turns out to be the most effective uh, way. Thirdly, we will uh, learn about exemplary case studies in which social transformation uh, played a key role in uh, addressing some of the climate change issues uh, in uh, Latin American cities and some of the names you wouldn't uh, be exposed to in education in Asia or North America but these are really exemplary cases uh, happening in South America. Uh, lastly, we'll be prepared to think about how universities and colleges can cultivate social transformations in their own communities. Uh, what is the current structure of the universities? Uh, their siloed structure and them thinking of centers of knowledge that they must impart to the rest of the world which doesn't know anything. Is that really true? How much can universities actually learn from the outside world? And the example of the uh, UC San Diego is really a good one in terms of living laboratories and uh, places to provide hands-on experience and education on the environment and climate change. Okay. Social attitudes, norms, and behaviors uh, typically determine whether a new technology will succeed in practice or whether a policy proposal will see the light of day. So even though the technology may be considered very effective, uh, very affordable, uh, very good for uh, some things like, let's say, indoor reducing indoor pollution, uh, improving the quality of air, water, and so on. Whether it gets adopted on, on scale, at large enough scale by a sufficient number of people, uh, depends on many factors that are external to the technology itself. So the socio-technical issues of technology transformation, uh, technological transformation, are uh, not very intuitive in many ways. Climate change here, uh, is before we define it as a problem of power, here we're going to say climate change is complex, integral challenge that requires complex integral solutions. Okay, emphasis will be on the importance of integrating social transformation into integral solutions thinking and action. So there is literally a social transformation that is uh, essential for making progress uh, on this front. So there are many examples. This is an example of uh, historic uh, time scales over which various things uh, uh, transformed or became uh, scaled enough. So the canals uh, in the UK, so 
the uh, sorry in the United States as a percentage of their maximum network size so you can see uh, after beginning to be built in the 1800s uh, it took more than 50 years for them to reach uh, full utility uh, of their maximum network size similarly the railways the telegraph oil pipelines roads which now are basically uh, indispensable part of life in the US but you can see that they started in the late 19th century and here we are in the 21st century well into the second decade of the 21st century and the roads haven't reached the hundred percent uh, network size okay so this is a constant evolution if you look at uh, energy supply by fuel source as uh, a percentage of the total from 1830 onwards uh, here is the 25 percent threshold of the total energy portfolio coal reached 50 percent and has uh, dropped off and is kind of struggling at 25 percent or just above and there is plenty of awareness now in terms of its bad effects on health on the environment and just uh, in terms of uh, the affordability of other more healthy uh, more efficient resources uh, of uh, 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 sources of energy okay like crude oil that came along in the late uh, 1800s early 1900s uh, reached its uh, peak uh, and then it's been uh, flattening out uh, natural gas has taken off uh, and the hydro uh, electric is down here wood and biomass obviously not uh, much nuclear has struggled uh, for various other reasons and so on and so forth okay so what are the tricks then so to foster the actually to make socio uh, technical transitions uh, for deep decarbonization for example if we think about carbon as a problem uh, and if we want to transform the system to be independent of carbon uh, by let's say 2050 or sometime in the 21 uh, 21st century then what are the uh, ways to make it happen okay accelerating innovation is as important as climate policy uh, radically from the dominant uh, existing uh, system so policies have to move the existing systems away from the current uh, portfolio of uh, carbon-based fossil fuels okay so here are the internal and external pressure uh, forces that pressure the existing system to linger on so how can you realign them around maturing innovation so here are some niche innovations you can think of new technologies business models behaviors uh, people willing to put solar panels on their roofs people willing to uh, uh, invest in uh, uh, solar technology governments are willing to give incentives for solar innovation and so on so entry and exit of uh, new innovations happens by trial and error there is learning uh, improvement and support uh, from the system so that's kind of phase one phase two and then phase three it begins to uh, intermingle with existing socio-technical systems on which the industry culture policy science user preference and technology depend on for example if solar is not uh, cannot be turned on whenever you want if it is an intermittent source then many people may prefer uh, the other forms of energy even if it's coal uh, or hydroelectric uh, because that is much more reliable and it has what is called dispatchability so that you can increase the supply of power uh, when there is high demand like in the middle of the day or in the winter so that offers a window of opportunity for niche innovations to gain internal momentum and take advantage of the window of opportunity and trigger adjustments in the existing socio-technical systems to come out on the other end by uh, taking over or dominating with these niche innovations okay so the landscape uh, broad political economic and def demographic trends can occur this way where as the niche innovations begin to uh, 
be part of the portfolio of existing socio-technical systems like right now you have hybrid cars, electric vehicles, uh, self-driving uh, electric vehicles, uh, solar powered, uh, battery operated plug-in hybrid cars and so on and so forth. So the landscape developments uh, put pressure on existing systems creating new window of opportunity for innovation. So everything begin begins to uh, look at where the markets will go uh, in the future if these new uh, innovations begin to dominate and market forces uh, begin to put pressure on policy making, uh, incentives uh, and so on. Okay, So that's a kind of a combination of technological innovations combining with uh, socio-technical transformations. That's not the same as social transformation okay that's a little different but they are related 